Hello historians, I'm Mr. Fredo. Today's quick mini lesson is about the different types of government in ancient Greece, which is interesting to think about considering in the United States, there's been one form of government essentially since uh, the start of this nation, since the Declaration of Independence and the U.S. Constitution, it's been the Republic or a representative democracy. In ancient Greece, that wasn't quite the case. There were a variety of different forms of governments that were used at different times and for different reasons. And essentially what it comes down to is the ancient Greeks, like most people throughout the history of the world, are capable of getting upset and becoming unhappy and striving to change things. So today's mini lesson is kind of just a quick introduction about those four uh, main forms of government that were found throughout ancient Greece. Uh, there's certainly much more to all of these forms of government, but we want to highlight the main points for each uh, defining uh, for the, the defining characteristics of each main form of government used throughout ancient Greece, and then I'm going to leave you with a closing challenge, which will give you the chance to really get into the different types of government um, in a much more deeper sense. First form of government used throughout ancient Greece was monarchy, single ruler, a king, no queens in ancient Greece, and power is going to be passed down throughout the family. So that means whoever is the king, the next king is going to be that person's son. And it stays within the family over and over and over again. Another form of government used throughout ancient Greece is called oligarchy. Sometimes it's called an aristocracy. But essentially, an oligarchy is a little bit different because instead of having a king, it has multiple rulers. And those rulers are called aristocrats or oligarchs. And as you can tell by the picture, these people are all wealthy. But really what makes them wealthy is that they are landowners. And that's a big deal in ancient Greece because there isn't that much land to go around. So if you own it, you're really important and you have the ability to gain power and gain control over other people. These aristocrats would share power amongst themselves. Third form of government is known as tyranny. Tyranny also has a single ruler. That person is called a tyrant. And what's a little bit different here is instead of it being passed down within the family, a tyrant takes control through the use of force, which essentially means the tyrant or the person who's in control is the person who's had the ability to kill other people or have a strong enough military backing and, and people supporting them to the point where they don't have to uh, listen to anyone else and that they can control the people uh, through force. So key thing to understand with tyranny, not only tyrants not only take control by the use of force, but in many cases they also rule forcefully as well. Last main form of government used throughout ancient Greece is a great Greek achievement, direct democracy. No king, no aristocrat, no tyrant. It's all about the power to the people. The people, which really should be defined as citizens of ancient Greece, Athens in this case in particular, the citizens get to vote, and whoever gets the most votes wins, or whichever side of the issue gets the most votes wins. That's called majority rules or majority wins. The majority is whichever side has the most votes. So if 10 people vote and six people vote yes, and four people vote no. The majority is the yes, so the yes side of that issue would have won. Now, important to know as well, it doesn't necessarily go in that order and stay in that order. It starts with monarchy, and then it transitions to oligarchy used throughout ancient Greece, and then tyranny in different city-states, and then direct democracy like in Athens. But that doesn't end the story right then and there. There were periods throughout Athens in particular where tyrants would take back control or oligarchs would take back control and then direct democracy would pop back up again. There wasn't a particular order to it outside of that first initial um, sequence of monarchy, oligarchy, tyranny, and then direct democracy. Your closing challenge is to think about the pros and cons of each of those forms of government. Each of those four forms of government all have benefits. Each of these four forms of government also all have problems. So as you learn more about these forms of government 
and you learn more about what makes a government effective or ineffective, examine the characteristics of each one and see if you can tell me at least one advantage of each form of government and at least one disadvantage. And again, this is going to require a little bit more deep thinking, but it is an important task for us because if we truly can pick apart and analyze the functions of these governments and how they work, we understand what makes these effective or ineffective systems of control.